with the right, knock him out, knock him out, knock him out for the night. One chance, knock him out. Two, two, two times, knock him out, knock him out, knock him out for the night. Have you ever heard the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones? I want to ask you how that feels. Somebody says sticks and stones. Somebody insults you, somebody hurts you, and they come to you, and a friend comes to you and says, hey, sticks and stones, let me break my bones, right? Does that heal you? Does that soothe you? Does that make you feel good? No. Exactly. Here's what's going on. I want to invite you on a trip back. I want to invite you to a trip back to South America. I'm a very young kid. My mom decides South America is no longer for us. So we're going to leave. We're going to go to the United States. Now, if you were always in the United States, if you lived in the United States forever, that means very little to you. But being outside this nation and having the opportunity to come here is an amazing dream. It's, an, it's, it's the dream of the whole world. So for three years, our only goal was to get here. Now, you might know someone like my mom, or you may be someone like my mom. Once she gets a hold of a dream, it does, she never lets go. She gets it done. And our full family knew that we were going to have this happen. This was going to happen. Now, today my mom is losing a battle against Alzheimer's. So she gave us a dream. She gave us the opportunity to come here. And now we're watching her fade into that space. Sometimes my mom will say to me, when is Oscar coming home? And I'll just hug her because I know that she wants me, even if she doesn't recognize me at that moment. So it took us about three years to go from that dream to reality. We landed in the United States, we landed in Miami, a friend picks us up, and as we're making our way up from um, the airplane into the luggage area, there's an announcement made. And here's what my mind hears. Wah, 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 wah. I'm a little confused. Ever since I could watch TV, I've been watching Bonanza, uh, uh, Adam's 12, Emergency One. I, I couldn't understand those guys. I got their jokes. I mean, it was in Spanish, right? I mean, I don't know how it goes from your American language to Spanish, but I could understand it. And now I'm here, and I'm not kidding it. What happened? And as we make our way from Miami to Virginia to just outside D.C. in Arlington, I became aware that my life was totally different. It was going to be completely and totally shifted and changed. Here's the way my life started in the United States. We went through the schooling process, and my day basically was four hours of nothing but English classes. English as a second language. Some of you may be aware of it, but it's basically a very intensive process where they take you from having no awareness of the language to being able to defend yourself. And after a few, a number of months, I don't remember how many, I'm sitting in class, the teacher asked a question, and I was bold. I raised my hand. I knew the answer. And she called on me. And when I answered, the class mocked, laughed. My spirit was crushed. I'm like, what is wrong? And the teacher said, the answer is accurate. And the challenge was what I, how I said it. The words are, I use were such a shock and so different to the class that they just responded with what truth was to them. There was no mean-spiritedness. There was, in my, in my opinion, they were not being mean. They were just being kids. Remember, I was a young kid. But that crushed my spirit. I didn't know then what I know now. And that moment, I believe, is the break that got me to be able to stand in front of you here today so we can have this conversation. So let me invite you back to Monday Night Football. I don't know how many of you guys are football fans, but Monday Night Football, 1985, 86, Washington Redskins are playing against the New York Giants. Now, the New York Giants had a defensive player with them who is feared from the second that he got on the field, Lawrence Taylor. During the game, the quarterback for the Redskins gets the ball. He does a little bit of a trick, right? Lawrence Taylor is not fooled by that. Lawrence, Lawrence Taylor is a Spartan. He is a dynamite guy. He's 
cat-like reflexes. He's got muscles. He's just completely focused on the ball. And as he goes for Joe Theismann, he drapes himself over Joe. And Joe tries to shake him, but he can't. And LT starts to fall. And as he's falling, he falls right on Joe's leg below the knee. And if you talk to Joe Theismann in an interview that he gave in 2005 in the New York Times, Joe said the following. He said, the pain was unbelievable. He said, it snapped like a breadstick. And he said, it sounded like two muffled gunshots off my left shoulder. Then he says something incredible, and this is what I want you guys to take from this. He said, at that moment, I understood how magnificent, what a magnificent machine the human body is. Because instantly, below the knee, there was no pain. So let me get this straight. I'm sitting in a class, kids laugh at me, I'm crushed. But Joe Theismann gets a broken leg, and there is no pain. Does that make any sense to you guys? Let me explain to you what happens. Here's, here's the process. In fact, what does that have to do with an iceberg? Because your mind, your body is magnificent. I believe you're here per, for a purpose. I believe that anything that happens in your life that makes you feel pain is truly designed to point to you truth that you can use, that you can elevate so that you can become more. Because you have a mission. There is something inside of you that has to be done. And when you are able to grab that mission and use the pain as stepping stones, you're able to get there faster. Not only that, but you take with you the people that are supposed to come along. We all know that we have heroes. So here's what happened. I want you to think about an iceberg. An iceberg is a floating piece of ice but about 10% of it is above the, the, the waterline, 90% is below the waterline, right? This is exactly the way your mind works. Your conscious mind is about 10% of it. Your conscious mind is that part of you that lets you get dressed, that understands humor, that um, basically creates society, that, that creates the rules that we accept so we can be in society. Your unconscious mind is that part of you that is magical, that has no limits. Your unconscious mind is not controlled or limited by the fears that you have. So whenever somebody gives you an opportunity and you want to say yes, but you say no, your unconscious mind is saying, come on, take the chance, let's go for it, all right? Here's what happens. Joe Theismann, when that break happened, he knew that the medical staff was in place, ready to go. He knew the ambulance was ready. He knew that the hospital was just a few minutes right, and the ambulance would get him there fast. He knew it was not a life and death situation. In fact, if you go look at the video, if you look at the, at the time when this happened, you will see LT come, take him down, the break take place. LT gets up instantly. He knew something happened. He knew something was wrong. There's no celebration in Antil's part. He's, he's not saying, yay, I'm the greatest. No. He gets up, he looks over to the Redskins bench, he frantically, get over here, and as soon as he sees the response taking place, his hands go, LT's hands go to his helmet. You don't have to be an expert to know that this means, oh my goodness, what just happened? On the other hand, Joe Theismann said, instantly there's no pain. How do, we, how do we understand the difference? How do we understand the difference of me getting crushed by my uh, classmates laughing at me? Here's what I want you to understand. Your unconscious mind is powerful. It's elegant. It is ready for you to be able to move forward. So here I'm going to teach you a three-step process that you can use any time that something like that happens because I believe that Joe Theismann's big break literally was when that leg was broken. I believe that my big break literally was when I was in that classroom because I'm meant to communicate. I am meant to help. I am meant to give, I'm, I'm meant to help those people who are moving forward and, cre and creating more, help them to adjust the things that they need to adjust. And when I get to see how the sausage is being made and then the real product comes out, nobody sees the pain, nobody sees what's happened. My client, the people that have been in that space have done it. You have the same ability, you have the, the same qualities. And my demand of you is that you take chances, that 
anytime that you feel a break having taken place, that you move forward. Here's a three-step process. First step, when somebody says something to you, you're too short, you're too slow, you're too whatever it is, I want you to take and separate from the statement, I want you to separate emotion from truth. If what they're saying is pure meanness, if what they're saying is not accurate, if it's not truth, let it go. Put it aside. Don't pay any attention to it. And if what they're saying is actual truth, if you truly are, let's say, the instance of a, a, a kid who wants to be a football player or a baseball player, and he can't catch. If they can't catch, if that's true, then I want you to create three different qualities, characteristics, traits that you want the person to have. So in the case of catching, they want to become faster. They want to become more accurate. Whatever the characteristics are that the person needs to have, the traits are. That's the first part. That's the second part. The third part is mentally rehearse. I want you to make the little kid see himself catching the ball over and over and over again. What this does is it creates a muscle memory inside the kid so that the kid can actually start to do the process. We are here because we're thinking outside the box. The box is not in here. The box is out there. In here is magic. In here is power. You all are powerful. Here's what I want you to imagine. I want you to imagine, go back in time with me to the very first sunset. I want you to imagine that we can look outside the earth. And as we're outside the earth and we're seeing this first sunset, I want you to see the darkness take over. And if you were to look at the earth from above, there is only darkness. But at some point, man shows up. And I want you to imagine man being able to discover fire and manage fire, and then move forward to the time when man is able to use coal and oil and electricity. And if you go today, and if we take that very same trip today, and we look at the earth from above, and we look at the earth, there's very few spots in the rotation of the earth that have complete and total darkness. Here's my thesis, here's my theory. Where man comes in, where woman comes in, where humanity comes in, our spirit brings light. We are designed to create, to give, to show, to flow. And if you take those elements, the three steps that I just given to you, separate emotion from truth, create new characteristics, new traits, new qualities, and practice them over and over again, your unconscious mind will create a process for you to get beyond the hurt. Not only that, but now you can go to someone who's been hurt and teach them the same thing. And when you teach them this and you give them this gift, they are no longer going to be uh, held back by that. Had I known that when I was in that classroom, my life would have been different. It would have been totally changed. And that's the magic that Joe Theismann knew. He knew that the break was going to be handled. Now you know and I want you to go through the breaks that have happened in your life. What are the things that have happened in your past that you have not resolved? And it doesn't matter whether it was five days ago, five years ago, or when it was. When you go back into your past and you start to resolve those qualities, your unconscious mind will take care of them for you. And here's a magical thing about it. Just like the light took thousands of years to grow and to change the night light of the earth, your unconscious mind will be able to generalize the three-step process. It will be able to put it to work. And here's the magical thing. It's not going to take it thousands of years. It's not going to take it hundreds of years. It's only going to take it between 7 to 20 repetitions. If you do this process 7 to 10 times, your unconscious mind is going to start to go back in time to the times that you were hurt and resolve those problems and heal those problems. My challenge to you, my outside-the-box thought to you is use this, try it, test it, t t teach it to somebody else and watch how their lives are changed. My name is Oscar Rodriguez.